9. This is a good bunch of scripture here. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, and was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Who deceives the whole world. You know, maybe that'll give you a new way of looking at an unbeliever or somebody that does not have Christ evident in their life. We've got to get them on the conveyor belt. We've got to get the blood of Christ to set them free. Because they're walking in deception. I mean, no deception. I mean, there's some well-meaning people. There's some well-meaning people doing a lot of things that are good, but they're deceived. They don't know Jesus. They don't talk about Jesus. Jesus is not the point. The whole point of anything I'm talking about is Jesus is the center. When something else is the center, you got it wrong. So it says here, who deceives the whole world. And then verse 10, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength, and strength, I like that, and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who has accused them before God day and night has been cast down. You ever had somebody just accusing day and night? Day and night. The accuser whispering in God's ear day and night. I bet God doesn't really listen. But he's still yakking. Oh, did you see that? Oh, look at your Christians. Look at your children of God. The accuser of our brethren day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The only way you're going to overcome anything in life is through the blood. Period. It's not about reading 12 scriptures and repeating them because you memorized them. That's good. It'll help you. But it all needs to come back to what the blood did. And when Jesus shed his blood at the cross... When he said it is finished, it's a completed work because of the blood. That completed work of Christ is something that you need to get on the conveyor belt and say, I'm going to receive what is mine. Maybe I'll let God scan me. Maybe I'll let God be the teller and tell me some areas that I can begin to change. But when you begin to choose that, it says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. They overcame. 1 Timothy 6.12. Let's go there. We've only got a couple more scriptures. 1 Timothy 6.12. Amen. How many are getting something today? It says, fight the good fight of faith. How could there ever be a good fight? Because it's a fight that you win. Oh, there's one already. Yes, you know what I mean. Teaching you too well. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed with a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. So no matter whatever fight you're in right now, if you stay on the conveyor belt, if you plead the blood of Christ, if you allow the blood, which never will ever, ever, ever lose its power, that's what's going to change. That's what's going to change. It's simply, and then it says, lay hold of eternal life. You take that word eternal life, it means as God would have it. What is, what is eternal life? It's not only just when you die, you go and be with Jesus forever and enjoy and be, you know, just, just that is awesome. But eternal life also means as God, life as God would have it. Mm-hmm. You need to think about that because that's what eternal life means. Life as God would have it. So if you're not experiencing a life right now as God would have it, then we need to lay hold of what the Word says. We need to lay hold of what the Scripture says. We need to lay hold of what the blood says. The Bible says the blood speaks. You need to lay hold of what Jesus has done. He didn't just overcome rigor mortis. you got to hear that. He didn't just overcome rigor mortis. He overcame. He stole the keys to death and to hell and the grave. He stole that. He took it back. He paid the highest price ever for everything. If God would give you Jesus, what in your life can't God accomplish? Amen? Let's look at a couple more. 1 Samuel 24, 15. 
just want to look at just some, some, some opportunity of Scripture here where God will talk about pleading the blood and deliver you. 1 Samuel. Amen. I'm going the wrong way. 1 Samuel 24. 15. Let the Lord therefore be the judge, and judge between you and me, and see and plead my case, and deliver me out of your hand. Plead my case, and deliver me out of your hand. Plead my case. You know what that means? When the enemy is yakking, look what they did, look what they haven't done, look where they didn't go, look what they didn't do. The blood is pleading your case. The blood of Christ is pleading your case saying, they have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. They have pleaded your case. And when they're standing in the court of law in the high courts, and when, they, when the accuser is trying to accuse you, and you're standing there, and you are guilty as charged, suddenly Jesus steps in. And when God looks through Jesus and looks at you, He sees the blood of Christ. He sees wholeness. He sees overcoming power. Um, plead your case. Isaiah three thirteen is another one you could go to another time. You don't need to go there right now. Go to Jude one three. This is a good one. Jude one three. Something that you need to, to realize that we're not just in some <coughs> patty cake life where we sort of well we hope we survive. We hope we get there. Go with me to Jude one three. We hope we're not hoping. I hope I get there. No, you're not going to get there if you hope, right? Han went to the butcher shop the other day, and she's looking for a job, and she's excited. And she didn't go in there and say, well, I hope you'll give me a job. She said, I I'm willing to work hard for you. I'm willing to, to do what you need done, and, you know. And so she's not just, I'm just saying that because sometimes, you know, in our lives, we just say, well, we hope things will work out. We sure hope that God will, you know, maybe come off of his throne and send healing our way, or we hope the kids turn out okay, or hoping won't get you anything. Hope is like a blueprint. But at some point, you need to build, okay? At some point, you need to begin to say, God said it, and I'm going to believe it. Let's look at this. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which is once delivered to all the saints. He's saying earnestly contend. You know why he's saying earnestly contend? This was 60 years after Pentecost. What happened at Pentecost in Acts? Tongues as a fire. People were on fire. People were getting saved. And 60 years later, they're all back to eating bagels and timbits and, oh, I don't know, maybe God will move, maybe he won't, maybe he will, we hope. And so they're saying, look, it's only been 60 years and we know there was a major move of God then. And he's saying, we've all got this common salvation, but I found it necessary to write to you concerning that you would contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to all the saints. Earnestly contend. You can't just get out of bed in the morning and go, well, I hope we make it through the day. <laughs> you know, I hope so. It won't get you anywhere. you got to earnestly contend. you got to begin to say, I walk by faith, not by sight. You gotta earnestly contend and say, if God said it, that's gonna settle it. You gotta earnestly contend and say, if the blood of the Lamb has been shed for me, then everything that I need, everything that is broken and missing in my life, is paid for. Amen. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God, our Jesus Christ. You want to be careful, you know. We spend so much time walking around sort of saying, well, I hope I can somehow please God. Forget trying to please God and just accept what Jesus has given you. And doesn't the word say that, that, that you know, the goodness of God brings us to repentance? That when you begin to look at the work of Christ and go, I can't physically do this on my own. I need Jesus. I need the blood. I need his power. I need his overcoming strength. When I'm weak, he's strong. And when you do that with a pure heart, God will move. Then you're earnestly contending. You're earnestly contending. Because when you try and do it all on your own, man, you can't. You burn out. You go, I don't think I can do it. And then the enemy comes along and says, yeah, you're right. You never have been able to do it. 
Maybe when we begin to let God move and we begin to let God be the boss, when we begin to let the Holy Spirit begin to lead us and guide us into all truth, Amen. that's when God's going to move and do something in your life. The good news is here that when we stop the accuser of the brethren, when we earnestly contend and fight the good fight of faith, because yes, you're right, we have already won it. Yes, you're right, the blood has already been shed and his power has gone out. We just simply need to receive it. Just like showing somebody Jesus, you're offering them the free gift of salvation. There's nothing that's required except them receiving the gift and allowing their heart to be renewed. They can't pay for it. The way they pay for it is with a tender heart receiving going, I can't do this. I need Jesus. I want Jesus. And with that wanting and can't and, and, and desire, that's when God begins to make you a new creation. Old things are passed away, and now all things are new. All things are new. If you really believe that, I mean, think about it. When you buy something new, everybody's buying bigger TVs and, you know, all these things. You're excited. You get it out of the box, and you're reading all of the stuff that's available on this new TV. It can do this, and it can that or cell phones or whatever and you're trying to find all of the stuff and you're into the manual finding what is yours that's the same thing a new Christian should do a new Christian and an old Christian but should begin to say what is mine what is what what can it do oh God can help me with my my family oh God can help me maybe you need to wrap that red cord around a window as a as a reminder that it's the blood that never loses its power the reminder that Jesus paid it all the reminder that whatever rut you're in God says there that rut you're coming out of because Jesus has paid too high a price to see you sit there but you do need to earnestly contend and we need to begin to receive it Amen. you need to take that step plead the blood of Christ over your life and when you're stuck and you go, I don't know the answer here, plead the blood. <clears throat> Say, Father, the answer is in the blood of Christ. I plead the blood. Amen? If you're watching via uh, YouTube today and you've never met Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you've never allowed Jesus to come into your heart, you need to do that. And how you do that is simply praying this prayer. And if you would, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Forgive me for all of my sins. I believe you've made me new. I receive right now that free gift. I love you, Lord. I believe you died for me and rose again. And I will live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that for the first time, the Bible says you need to tell somebody. Share the good news of what God has done for you. Then you need to get into a good church and hear the word and continue to grow. Amen. Amen. I want to just pray for everybody just corporately for a moment here. The word says we're going to plead the blood of Christ. And, and just understand that every situation that you're going through, the blood of Christ has paid for you. So simply, whatever's going through your mind right now, just whatever that situation is, just see that as being paid. It's stamped, paid for by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen? Father, just as we corporately pray for the congregation today, Lord, I plead the blood over every mind, over every heart. Lord, I thank you that everything that we need is all in Christ. And so today, Lord, we receive it. I take authority over everything that would bind the mind and would bind the heart. Lord, I thank you if there's a stony flesh. Uh, Lord, I think you're going to turn it into a heart of flesh. Father, I thank you if there's anything that's just controlling the mind. I take authority over fear. I take authority over anything that would rob us from the life that God has. And we plead the blood of Christ over each and every member today. Safety and protection in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, how many got blessed? Amen. 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 Well, we just.